Atlanta, and I have the distinct honor and privilege to introduce to you the visionaries behind the Dream Team. And you guys, they, they are such a phenomenal power couple in real estate. And I, um, I feel so honored and blessed to serve alongside them. And they share so much valuable information and provide value to the real estate community as a whole. So I want to introduce to everyone on the call, Rod and LaSheree Omi. They are realtors and CEOs of the OB team brokered by EXP Realty, serving the Northern Virginia and Maryland area. They have more than 20 years of experience. Y'all, I know they don't look that old. They are awesome, but they do in real estate, as real estate investors and realtors. They have received numerous report awards and designations, including uh, multiple in the Prince William Association of Top Producer Awards, the Million Dollar Club Awards, and they are multi-year EXP icon agents. And if, I, if you were to know what an icon agent, they are the, in the top 5% of realtors in EXP. They hold the designations of Certified Luxury Home Marketing Specialist. Y'all, they, they uh, sell and list uh, million dollar properties like it's just everyday things. They are the founders of the Phenomenal Dream Team. <laughs> I am a part of a tribe of EXP Realty agents that expands nationally. And y'all, not just nationally, we are expanding globally across multiple cities, states, and countries who will provide weekly coaching, mentoring, inspiration to help their real estate business to the next level. Y'all, I can say this, the dream team, We what a part of our uh, tagline is we share everything but commission. This is an incredible group of people that share information and they are so willing to serve and to help. This is an exceptional group within the real estate industry. Rod and Lashery have a passion for helping people achieve their dream of home ownership and helping other agents achieve their goals by building a legacy in real, real estate. They are not only that, listen, we can add to it. They are veterans of the United States Marine Corps. And on top of that, they are ministers oh. in the church. Hats <laughs> off. Thank you for your service. Y'all, they are an incredible power couple, as I mentioned. So I'm going to give them a chance to introduce themselves and share a little bit about the vision that they have for these value added events, Rod and Lashery. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Natasha, for that awesome introduction. I uh, want to say good evening to everybody. We're so glad you, um, you're, you know, just carved out this time with us to just to be with us to learn this valuable information that we want to share with you about financial education and um, just information to help you uh, really get just live a better life, you know? That's and, right. That's right. Um, Our vision is really just to, uh, as uh, Natasha mentioned, we want to give back to the real estate community. So uh, the whole goal and vision for this event is actually to empower real estate agents so that we can live a better life, so that we can be financially empowered. We're always working with our clients, taking care of our clients, but we want to make sure that our finances are in order, right? Our taxes right. are paid, our credit is in order, and we're uh, establishing a legacy for our for our children and for generations to come. So this that's what this is all about one tonight. Yep, we're excited. You know, like Lashley said, we spent a lot of time really helping our clients make it to that table, make it to settlement day. We, we talked to them about their credit finances, but we wanna make sure that we get our house in order. And that's, that's why right. we're so excited uh, to have Mr. Richard Harden today. You're gonna hear more about him, but we really appreciate you, sir, coming on and just, uh, taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you're, you're, you're a well, uh, world-renowned speaker and author and coach and right, business coach, so right. many taglines, and you'll hear more about his bio, but we really appreciate you coming on. And um, guys, get ready, get ready for an awesome Power Pack night. Send a message, text a friend, you know, text somebody, say, you got to get on this, to send them to the dreamteamseminar.com. Tell them to get on this because they don't want to miss this information on tonight. Anything else, honey, before we turn it back over? Uh, I am ready to go. Let's go. Woo! All right, <laughs> Natasha. Woohoo! Awesome! Awesome! Yeah. Well, I am super excited. So just some housekeeping rules. You have been muted upon entry into the meeting tonight, 
And we're asking you that if you have a question along the way, just throw it in the chat. We're going to try and address all of your questions at the end. If you want to take copious notes, you better have a pen and a paper available because the speaker that we have tonight is going to share some great nuggets for getting your financial house in order and becoming financially fit. I get the honor and privilege to call him friend, coach, mentor. There's so many things I can say about Richard Harden, the power builder. Have you ever gotten paid and realized the check was spent before it hit your account? Wanted to qualify for a purchase, but found your, your credit score was anchored in the past. Wondered if you or your spouse would be together until your debt do you part, and that is D-E-B-T. Have you answered yes to any of these questions? Income shifting is for you. Richard Harden is a business transformation expert specializing in innovative use of systems, strategies, and solutions to help enterprises and individuals get from where they are from wh to where they want to be. Born and raised in Atlanta, Richard received his formal training at Duke University, where he received dual, not one, but two degrees in electrical engineering and computer science. After completing his formal education, he earned advanced degrees in, in and the real education from UHK, the University of Hard Knocks. Come on now. As a speaker <laughs> and motivator. He has been recognized internationally by Toastmasters International and the National Association, uh, National Speakers Association, as one of the five top Georgia speakers for more than a decade. Many companies, social, and business groups around the country have been motivated by his message of untapped power in each person. Richard is noted for his energetic style and his passionate and sincere delivery. Today, Mr. Richard Harden will share from, from key components of financial fitness regimen to help us get our financial houses in order, in order through the power of income shifting. Help me welcome the financial educator and business success coach, Mr. Richard Harden. Y'all know, I, I forgot to say one thing I shared on the call yesterday because we're in a virtual world. Some of you might still be a mute, but your cameras are turned on. Um, I used to be an interpreter for the deaf. So what the way that they applaud is like this. So if you can't, don't want to be heard, but you want to be seen, let's get the applause going. And that's you just wave your hands in front of the camera, or you can come off mute and you can just applaud. We appreciate you, Chor, joining us today. And now I turn it over to Mr. Richard Harden. Welcome, Mr. Harden. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm, I'm so excited. It was, it was one of those things. It was like, oh, oh my God, I'm so glad I decided to get to the stand-up desk for this conversation because after that introduction, I think I need to do something to impress you, like float across the room or something. But before I jump in, let me give credit where it's due, back to Natasha and Rod and, and the family at Dream Team with just the idea of financial fitness because this collaboration kind of came about organically, meaning... When my friend Natasha started into the real estate arena, she started finding people that had credit challenges. How many of you find some people that have credit challenges? And so people would start to ask the question, well, you know, part of what you do in financial education helps people with their credit. See what you can do to this person. So as we started interacting with people, two things became very clear. Number one, people that came to us to get credit repair were getting results, meaning 50 to 150 points over the course of a quarter. But the second thing was that even though a good credit score would qualify them, pre-qualify them for a mortgage, they needed to get that debt to income ratio right to get through underwriting. Does that make sense? So we started really addressing the whole financial picture. And what I found was that many of the realtors needed some financial education as well. Now, here's the thing that I ask people up front, and I, I want to make sure that you decide which category you are. Because I did a categorization earlier today. And do you know the awesome responsibility you have as realtors? I mean, the American dream says part of what you get is home ownership. And so in that process, you become the person that guides that person into the thing that they were told from the time they were born 
that they should have in their investment portfolio. Am I making sense? Now, at the same time, there's two categories of real estate professionals I find. So you have one category, we'll just call them average for today because I assume that they are not on the line with us. But you know, if they are, here's the best thing about any category that describes you is you can always decide which side you wanna be on. Am I making sense so far? So let's talk through these because so, here's what I want you to understand. I am a sales professional. I do not sell homes. How many of you know that? Is my screen sharing on your side? I see that I've got two monitors going on one laptop. But can everybody see my PowerPoints right now? Yes, you're good. Okay. Yes, you're good. So in that world, in that, in that mix, in the, in the spectrum of real estate professionals, find that average realtors are, are transactional. They're there, they're there to sell a house where the wealthiest are relational. They're building relationships that last beyond the point of sale. Average realtors sell home, houses. Wealthy realtors are trusted home advisors. Average realtors. Scarcity mentality, wealthy abundance mentality, average do it all on their own, wealthy leverage a team. Average realtors know everything they need to know already. They got a license, don't they? Wealthy, always learning, always growing. Average realtors are income focused, wealthy realtors are cash flow focused. Everybody wants to be wealthy, including average realtors, but wealthy realtors have a plan to build wealth. So have you decided which side of the line you live on? How many of you want to be wealthy? wealthy. Thumbs up, thumbs up, put it in the chat. Because here's, here's one thing we're going to have to do different on this webinar. This isn't one of those webinars where you got a speaker that's going to come on and talk to themselves for an hour and leave. We are going, when I left Duke University, here's the thing that I agreed with myself about. I would never attend another lecture, nor will I give one. So we're going to have an income shifting conversation. And here's why I ask if people want to be wealthy, because I never want to force information on people that don't want it. But here's my reality. In my education, I had something missing versus what I want, meaning I always wanted to be wealthy. How many of you always want to be wealthy? But here's what I found through my training. I went through all the grades here in Atlanta Public Schools. So from my eighth grade through my senior year, I got the best grades in my class. As a matter of fact, from my eighth grade to my senior year, I didn't get any grade below a 93. Wait, clap for that. I'm, I just told y'all I went to inner city public school in the South. And I'm telling you, we make those kind of grades. They call you things that are not your given name. Like what did y'all call that kid at your school? Nerd, geek, Nerd, book geek, yep, all of that. All of, the, all of those things. But the last day they called me valedictorian and they've called me that ever since. So I had no doubt that I learned everything the Atlanta public school system wanted to teach me. From there, I got an academic scholarship to Duke University. And in my double majors, I took enough classes to have a triple major in math. I just couldn't take any more classes. But I got out into the workplace at the right place at the right time, meaning I made good money, but I found myself frustrated because the more money I made, I didn't see myself making progress towards wealth. Can anybody relate? Meaning how many of yes. you have heard the phrase, the more you make, the more they take? Yeah. Well, it turns out that's not just something they say. It's something that's real. And in that quest, in that frustration, because anybody ever get to the place where you know you're smart, but you feel like you're dumb because the results aren't coming the way you want them to? Mm -hmm. So in that frustration, I started looking for answers. And the answer, take, if you're taking notes, jot this down. Income shifting is a set of strategies for getting your money back into your pocket. That's the first thing I want you to know. So the first thing, most important thing is strategy. Now the second thing, and here's what gets to be important to understand. Somebody said, hence the dual career, meaning bivocational, you got a regular job and real estate as well. Who is that? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> so, I mean, so think about this process. So now, as we go through, we're gonna talk first about where the money went. Because here's one thing most people are unconscious about when it comes to making wealth a part of their portfolio. And those four things, I'll go through them quickly, but I want to make sure that we know the enemy as a part of our battle strategy. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So sharing back to the screen. So four challenges, write these down in your notes. If you're taking notes, if you're not taking notes, start taking notes so that you can write these down. The four challenges that everybody faces in America, not trained to deal with inflation, taxes, 
debt and big business. And I want you to make sure to understand how they create a cycle that for most Americans consistently removes each paycheck from their pocket. Meaning if you think about our world today, inflation is a silent killer, yes or yes? Yes. Those of you that haven't really thought about it, because most people don't think about how much our dollars don't buy compared to what we expect. Meaning inflation has grown at about 4% per year for most of our lives, except in this year, it's been exceptionally high. And the way that I picture it, Rod, I'm, I guess I'm a little bit older than you. We'll, we'll have to figure out who's oldest. Well, I remember when I started driving, you could get gas for 79.9. Does anybody remember that? Mm -hmm. So if you had a $20 bill, you could take it and submit it to the gas station attendant and expect change after filling up your car. So the gas was going fast and the dollars were going slow. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But then over time, now if you take $20 to a gas station attendant, what happens? Well, yeah. you really need to know where the next gas station is because that's not going to last you long. And it's because the value of the dollar has gone down in comparison to the things that we need. And that's even more severe in 2020. Now, the next part, and this is what puts most Americans, this combination, we call taxes the chainsaw massacre because it separates the head from most working people's checks. Now, as realtors, you have an advantage over most of your clients who, why just the majority of people in America work a W-2, 30% of their income is gone before they get home. And that's why most Americans are in a situation where they have, oops, I did not mean to stop sharing, but we, we're tracking so far, right? Inflation and taxes. Those two things together, I think they cause debt. Do you agree? Yeah. Because think about it. If you, if you make $100,000 a year and pre-qualify for a home at $100,000 a year, but you only take home 67 and that 67 is only worth 50, what do you need to do? Make more money. You need to borrow money. <laughs> and that's what they tell us. And debt, we call the curse because it can be generational. Sin is something you do, but a curse is something that's passed on to you. And with debt, debt, the interest portion of the things that people borrow. Not the mortgage principal payment, but the mortgage interest, the car note interest. That takes the next third of the average person's income. And then the third, we'll just call it capitalist culture, big business. See, we, were, we have some bad programming, meaning we were put into a capitalist society, but we were not trained to be capitalists. We were trained to be capitalized on. Does that make sense? Now, here's the good news. It's not just you. If you didn't know, it's not your fault, but how many of you understand if you add up one third to taxes, one third to debt, one third to big business on a dollar that's worth less, that's why most people are ice skating backwards when it comes to creating wealth. But here's the other thing I want you to write in your notes. Your income is making wealth, making someone wealthy. Your income is making someone wealthy. It takes a strategy to make that person you. And that's income shifting. So as we talk about, well, what is income shifting? Here's what I want you to know. It's a set of three strategies. If you're a real estate professional right now, one of these you already have working in your favor if you do it right. Do you hear me? Yep. So the three strategies, three strategies to income shifting. And we'll take a break in between these to make sure they're clear. Number one is to increase your cash flow. Number two is to build a business income. And number three is investment income. Simple, straight ahead things, but I want you to understand how these work relative to the things that have put people out of place when it comes to having their money available to create wealth. See, here's what you gotta understand first. When we talk about increasing cash flow, that's one of the things I specialize in. Meaning a byproduct of our strategies is that we help people extend their cash flow and, oh, I need a definition of terms. Because I, I do, I remember, I'm from Atlanta. There was a time where I thought income and cash flow were the same thing. Does anybody else think that? Yeah. Well, it turns out they are actually different. Income is a measure of amount. It's the amount of money you make. Cash flow, on the other hand, is a measure of time. It's how long your money stays with you and therefore what things your money can do through you. Does that make sense? So think about this. If you got a million dollar income, your income is sky high, yes? Yes. But if you got $2 million in bills, you run a half a period short on cash flow. Making sense? We're at the same time. You can be wealthy on an income of $80,000 if your bills are $40,000 because now your cash flows twice your need. Does that make sense? 
So cash flow is actually the definition of wealth. As a matter of fact, one of my first financial educators was Robert Kiyosaki in Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And he said that you're wealthy when you can afford to live on the earnings of your investment without working ever again. Wow. It's time, not money. Make sense? Yes. Good so far? Any questions yeah. so far? So how do the strategies break down? Well, the first thing we got to do is understand that what makes, what, what makes a bigger difference in America than how much money you make is how you make your money. Meaning, think about this. If you have a job, you're taxed at 28 to 33 percent, and that tax comes off the top. Now, as realtors, I want you to understand that's the reality for most of your prospects. Yes or yes? Yes. Now, at the same time, so the first thing that we do is just understand that's a problem for most people. We help people minimize taxes, minimize expenses, minimize debt, and increase their credit score. And we'll talk about how all those things work together as a system, but the first thing that we got to do is get your existing income to last you longer. Now, the second category is building a business income. Good news for you. As long as you're out there moving product, you have a business income, but the best thing about businesses is how they get taxed. Because Teresa Hards did a great job sharing the concept of you, Y-O-U, CEO of your business, yes? You know the best thing about businesses? They get taxed less than labor, meaning 18 to 25%, and they get taxed after. Write that down, they get taxed after their spending. So they get taxed on what's left. Matter of fact, let me not say they, you get taxed on what's left. Unless you be tax efficient, if you're good at documentation and structure, lets you write off a significant part of your lifestyle and provides additional income. And then the last step is to get to where we have investment income. Because the way the founding fathers set up America, money making money is taxed less than anything in our country. So, you know, we want to get to the place where in addition to making money by the transactions that we create, we've got investments that are producing capital gains tax, which are 15% or less, depending on rules and holding and producing real assets. And the most important investment we can ever make is an investment in ourselves. Does that make sense? Yeah. So high level concepts out of the way. Any questions before I jump into cash flow expansion? No, no questions. questions? Yet. All right. Oops, I did not mean to stop sharing. I meant to go to the next screen. Let me go back to here. So as we talk about this process, here's the first thing I want you to do. How many of you have seen a cash flow statement? I have. Let me see. I don't, I don't have a show of hands on this screen. Let me go to the other side. Hands up, thumbs up, thumbs up. In the, that's a reaction thing down at the bottom. If you have seen a cash flow statement, if you have not, I will break it down because this is how a bank views us. This is how businesses view themselves. I got a lot of thumbs up. So I want to make sure that as we talk about building business and business income, that we're fixed and focused on the top line, which is where most people in America look, is what money's coming in and what money's coming out. At the bottom side, you have a balance sheet, which is assets versus liabilities. Assets are things that you, that put money in your pocket. I use Robert Kiyosaki's definition here. Liabilities are things that take money out of your pocket. Now, for most of America, here are their top expenses. And surprisingly, the two biggest expenses in most people's homes, most people don't even consider them expenses on their own. But taxes and interest, by far, are the biggest interest expenses in our home, yes? Yes. And what do they do? They go to someone else. They make the government rich. They make the banks rich. But they take the money out of our pockets. Now, when we think about liabilities, America has a common set of liabilities. I know as realtors, you won't necessarily love that I put the house that you live in on the liability side, but what, if I look at what my house does relative to my investment real estate, my house takes money out of my pocket. How about you? Yeah. Car student, because you got to live somewhere. That's, that's the main thing we talk about. Student loans, credit cards, and then assets, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, business. So from a cash flow point of view, that's the only thing I want you to think about in your lives right now and the shift that we need to make. Because three things have to, well, it's actually four. So let me be fair. The first thing that has to shift is your mind. You just got to look at money and how it flows to or from you differently. The second thing we have to do is shift our money back from the places that took it away, primarily taxes and interest to the degree that we can. 
And then we have to shift our source of income if wealth is our goal. Making sense so far? Yes. So if you look at your life, and we'll take time for everybody to look at this exercise. First cash flow is what Robert Kiyosaki in Rich Dad Poor Dad calls the cash flow of the poor, meaning they have a job as their only source of income, money comes in, it goes out through the expense column. Middle class, they're in the middle because money comes in, they do have a good job, but also have some liability. They got a car, got a student loan, got credit cards, have whatever things are here, along with expenses, all their money goes out the door. And the cash flow pattern of the wealthy is the final one where their assets, the things that they own or the assets that they've invested in produce more than enough income to sustain them. Now, by the way, one of the secrets of America is we're responsible for creating our own wealth at retirement now, yes? Yes. I mean, there was an era where there were pension plans and you could count on social security, but right now you have to work hard enough during your earning years that in those years after your money can replace you at work. So by definition, you got, you got two choices. Get wealthy or be dependent on family, friends, and the federal government. Yes? So which choice are we making today? Um, get wealthy. Let's get wealthy. Let's get wealthy. Well, let's, let's get, get wealthy. <laughs> so as we, as we go through that process, let's think through, oops, back to the beginning right here. As we think through the flow, here's the thing that I understood. Getting your house in order requires steps to happen at first. Meaning once I understood that I needed assets, I needed to be out of debt, and that I needed things that were making money in addition to me, I tried to do them all at the same time. How many of you know that was crazy? That's crazy. So what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna suggest is taking the steps one at a time in order, but taking them purposefully. Meaning the first, you know, there, there are seven steps in anyone's shift from where they are to where they want to go. And the first place that we start is in our minds. Am I making sense so far? Yes. So step one in getting our financial house in order is building that foundation. Now, when I talk about foundation, it's different than in a house, but it has the same impact. Meaning if your foundation is not solid enough, how many of you know that that house is going to fall? That is correct. So what do we need in a foundation? First thing is a mindset. I, I urge people to have that shift in mindset from scarcity to abundance. Have, have the attitude that even though I don't have everything I want today, I, don't, I no longer live in the land of not enough. I'm in the land of more than. Building a mindset, but also having an intentional financial education. Having a game plan with coaches and a team and with teachers so that you're not doing this by yourself. Write that in your notes. There is no such thing as a self-made millionaire. How many of you know that before Oprah Winfrey was, um, had a team, she was just doing the weather, but once she had a team, now she's O. <laughs> so foundation, mindset, education, game plan, and team. This is where I invest most of my energy, my time, and my talent is educating people on the things that we did not learn in school. Second thing you need is a written budget. Everybody say written budget. Written budget. Now, here's the most important. People, people always get on my case. They say, Richard, this is boring. I know, I know about how much money I got. I know where it's going. I know what it's doing. But here's what happens when you write. When you write, you start to open up that creative channel, and you tell your money where to go before you have to wonder where it went. Does that make sense? Yep. Question so far? Third step mini emergency fund. Actually, I tell people until you have one to $3,000 that you do not need to touch, you're not ready to invest. And that's hard for people to hear because, because here's the thing, people come to me for advice about investments. And the first thing that I let people know is you got to brace yourself for what if, because how many of you know that Murphy's law is a real thing? What does Murphy's law say? You're either in a problem, just got out of a problem, or on the way to a problem. And what I found in my life, Natasha, was my problems usually cost somewhere around $500 to $1,000. That's right? true. But now that you got your mini emergency fund, we want to aggressively get out of debt. Now, why do we say get out of debt first? I thought we were going to talk about investment and getting rich. I'm asking. Anybody know why? 
Because you can't spend or you can't get no more money unless you pay off the debts you already have. That's it. I mean, think about this. If I had a bucket of water and I started pouring water into the top of the bucket, but I, have a hole in the bucket. but I got a big hole in the bottom of the bucket, whenever I take away the hose, what do I have left in the bucket? The same amount of water. None. It's still going to leak out the bottom. And for most people in America, the consumer spend that we have, if you have a credit card with any balance at all, you probably get a better in return on investment on that credit card than any real estate, stock, Bitcoin, any other thing you can invest in. So start first with getting the water out of the boat. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now we have aggressive plans and systems to help people. I was actually just talking to a young lady before we got on this call, right? And um, we were talking about schools that we wanted to go to. She went to Dartmouth. So that was also one of the schools I got, I got uh, accepted to. But once I visited, I realized I wanted to go to school in the South. Let's be real. But her creditor's plan for her debts was to have her paying them for another 833 years. We put together a debt elimination plan that we have her debt free in two years and seven months. Now, I didn't do it. I got a team of experts with calculators that go in and strategically attack the math, but that's the first step is to get out of debt because now you have more of your money. That's the first shift back. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, once we get debt free, that gives us room for the next step. Now, what's our next step? Well, especially, this is what they told me. They said that you need to build a true emergency fund, meaning three to six months of your expenses in a cash equivalent. And I say that to you guys in a selling, because I'm, I'm also in a selling profession. I sell enterprise software, not the same business, but the same process. There are peaks and valleys in my industry, and you've got to be able to weather the storm of your investments just in case outside closes for a month. Does that make sense? Yes. And then the last two, invest for long term, because you got to understand, income is the outcome. We want to build to a place where, in addition to the homes that we live in and the things that we buy, if you're in the real estate business, how many of you have more than one house and have some of those houses making you some money? And then the last one, putting the roof on the house, build wealth and give. Now, I say those things up front, and let me check where I am on time. Okay, we are running on good time to say, how many of you have the steps one through seven? Who can re you can read them back to me, bottom to top. Foundation is? Get mindset. Mindset. Mindset, and that's your education. That's your game plan. That's your team. Mm -hmm. Making sure that you start off with a destination in mind. What's the next step? Remember number budget. two? Written budget. budget. Written budget. And I meant to say this. Make sure that you make a plan to spend less, live on less than 80% of what you make. I'll talk about how to divide based on what your goals are. But the goal of more than enough is meaning I already have more than enough when I start. I just had some things I had to get out of here. Does that make sense? Next after budget. Mini emergency. Mini emergency fund. A mini emergency fund. Make sure that a credit card is not your emergency fund. I had that mistake for years, meaning I get the credit cards paid down, paid down, paid off, and then what would happen? You up the cards and put all the debt on it. And it'd be right back on there. And because it's diabolical, it would grow fast again. So again, make sure that you once you, you know, make get that mini emergency fund up front. And then pay off, well, I'll say all your debts. What I did figure out, if you're playing credit strategically, you need about 1% utilization on your credit card. It's going to be kind of garlic. Because it'll, it'll, it'll add about 20 to 30 points to your score. All right? Oh, I forgot. The then next. That's okay. I got it. Get out of debt, snowball. Snowball your debts, meaning pay with focus. I was doing the, the crazy person. When I realized that I could get out of debt, I started, whenever I made money, I tried to pay $100 to all of my creditors at one time. How many of you know that that is um, it's a strategy? It'll work eventually. But if you could focus like a fist, one at a time, you can knock down a lot of debt in a hurry. Make sense? After yes. debt snowball? Mm -hmm. Build your emergency fund three to six months. Build your emergency fund three to six months, then? Invest for the long term. Long-term investment. And I do urge, see, this is one of the groups of people I get to talk to about making sure that you invest 
in your profession, meaning my real estate is a part of my portfolio. And here's the exciting thing. We'll talk about this in a second. Make sure that you have a team helping you through that investment process. And my grandmama, her name was Jacqueline Rich. She said, now, baby, don't put all your eggs in one basket. But make sure that you have intelligent allocation matched to your goals. And then build wealth and give. So let's talk about some things to consider. I started investing in real estate in 2002. It was, um, it was a scary time for me, meaning my frat brothers that went to Duke with me, they had just bought, they just graduated law school, so they got matching black BMWs, right? And I was contemplating my first real estate purchase for investment. It was an REO in Forest Park, Georgia. $60,000 home. And I, you know, I called my friend that was in real estate. I said, I'm gonna do it. I jumped in. I've been doing real estate by myself for years. Make sense? So I hired the contractors. I had to sue the contractors. Anybody ever had to kick some contractors out of your house before? No. Cease and desist order is what it's called. Make sure you got a legal team <laughs> <laughs> as a part of your process. Just, just take your stuff and go. Don't, go, don't come back over here. <laughs> but finally got the house in the market. I'm glad to say that for, you know, for, what's this, 2002, that's 18 years. For 18 years, I've had that rental property and I've been really blessed with good tenants that stayed with me for a long time. As a matter of fact, my most recent tenant just moved out. She moved in in 2007. She stayed with me 13 years. Wow. Yes? Yeah. During that time, I used the process and finally paid that house off. And when it was time to go to market, I did something different this time. Because here's I had a routine, meaning when the tenant said they were moving out, I get my move out inspection, I go over to the house, I set up my card table, get my sign out of the, out of the uh, storage building, because I ain't even take it back to my house, put it in the yard, open house every Saturday, usually three weeks to four weeks. But this year I did something different. I got professional help. Everybody say I need help. I need help. <laughs> Natasha said, I can list your property for you. I said, you can? I don't want to sell it, I just want to rent it. No, we do that too. <laughs> I sent Natasha my info sheet, the address, my lease, and the things that I normally tell people when they ask questions. And she said, you know, well, I'm gonna open a house. Well, you know, long story short, where normally it takes me a month to rent a house, I don't think that I saw the house after giving the key to my turnover crew until the tenant was there putting the check in my hand. How many of you believe that professionals can help you do a thing better than you can do it for yourself or by yourself? They definitely help. Yeah, so, they definitely I, can. So I say that to say, one of the things that I do professionally is I provide access to my team of experts to help people with the areas they struggle in. Primarily, that's taxes, credit, debt, and wealth planning. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, for those of you that are on the team, I think I previewed the Financial Edge membership before, and I do want to remind you, in context of who you are as a realtor, get some professional help with handling things. Natasha was actually surprised to see that all the documents for establishing a trust and what else did we have in there? Trust, wills, LLCs, all the documents are actually included in the portal for our Financial Edge membership. So for those that haven't seen it, let me make sure that this part is clear to you. I'll take um, five minutes for the calls. We'll call, pause for questions. And then we might be getting on. My dog actually can tell by my voice when I'm almost done with the presentation. So my team of financial experts, what do we do? We provide people the financial edge. Now for folks that are my customers in this group, I think there is Linda Means and Natasha. Credit Max, Equity Max, Money Max, and Wealth Max. And we do have a specialized division that helps people with the unique debt resolution solutions that are out there. Because how many of you know when you, people come to you with credit problems, you may never know what's going on in somebody's home. So for $79.97 a month, each of the pillars, including the spouse, lets people have experts in the financial areas that matter. So Credit Max is the thing that most people focus on first, especially when they're intentionally buying a home. Now I say up front, one of the powers of having access to the membership is being in a position to have a mentoring relationship with someone, meaning how many of you know there's a difference between the person that helped me sell a house once I got my credit right and the person that helped me get my credit right so I could buy a house? Show of hands. 
So that's one of the things that we provide as outsource service, meaning you call me, I'll get them set up with the team, but here's the good news about our servers. We've been doing it for 25 years, RESPA and CROA compliant, and on average, 50 to 150 points and know Natasha's first two clients working with us got three figure increases in their first 30 to 60 days with the service. And then we do include free credit reports, all the bureaus, and the most important online chat, unlimited consultations. But also awareness, meaning with our smart credit service, we let people track where they're going. And this has gotten to be particularly important when realtors come to me to say, well, this person wants to buy a home this quarter. Oops, am I still sharing the screen or you see me? Because if you got a time deadline, what gets tracked gets measured. What gets tended to gets done. Does that make sense? You got to track. Because yeah. how many of you have had someone come to you say, I don't know what my credit score is, but I know it's bad. Yeah. So that's where we focus first. And then the next thing we do is just walk them through the rest of what's there with money, hoping to improve their financial fitness. Because as their credit score is going up, we do want to decrease their debt. Knowing that debt to income ratio is important, but knowing that the average person suffering credit problems doesn't know there are things that they can do to make sure they get a custom monthly plan to get out of debt in record time. And now you extend the relationship, meaning not only did Rod help me get my credit together so I could buy my house, he helped me get on a customized plan so I could pay it off in half the time. And with the Equity Max credit, credit plan, that's the thing that we do. We look at the principal balance, their expense, and their current take home. And then we give them aggressive plan that automates a snowball so they don't have to figure out what debt snowballing is. They just have to follow the system. Everybody say, follow the system. And if you're writing in your notes, that's what system stands for. Save yourself stress, time, energy, and money. In this case, we save this person 21 years in debt and $160,000 in interest. You think they, they will refer you to other people? Absolutely. And then the last category, Money Max, of course, on the consumer side, because most of the people that you meet do work jobs with W-2s. We do give them budgeting and saving strategies to increase their cash flow from their jobs. But what I find most business owners enjoy most in Money Max is this thing called tax buy. TaxBot is my digital assistant, because let me tell you something. I'm actually really good at what I do, but you know what I'm really bad at? Tracking mileage, capturing expenses, putting them in documentation. I think all, those were all the things Teresa said you needed to do to be able to write off your, your personal expenses as a realtor, yes? Yes. So imagine if you had a digital assistant on your phone that every time you got in the car, it said, is this a business trip? You said, yes, it captured the exact records. And then as you're out for these business meals, you take a picture of your receipt, take a picture of your food. And that's for Instagram. Picture of the food is for Instagram. The picture of the receipt is for the tax box. You enter that information and now you have an ongoing log. So unlike me, I don't know if anybody has ever suffered from this problem where you collect all your receipts through the year and you put them in a stack with some envelopes in a box. And then when you get them out of the box, it's just white paper, like the ink is faded. It, that's just me. All right. <laughs> now all of that goes away. You have automated tracking can integrate your income and outcome so that rather than you having to have an accountant, you have all your documentation in order. And the last part is just wealth strategy so that you can, in addition to the things that you invest in and your income shift a portion of your income to the creation of assets outside your industry. Does that make sense? All right. Any questions on financial edge or how to get the edge? We'll talk about wealth max another day. I do want to make sure that people know for any of those folks that you find out there to have the extreme salute situations, debt relief, debt settlement, we handle those, but recapping our steps, start with the education, make sure that you get a team that does the things that they're good at all day, every day on your behalf. Build a written budget, mini emergency fund, get, to, get the out of debt. The debtor is slave to the lender. Build your true emergency fund, invest for long term, knowing that you have to get income as the outcome. You have to invest in assets that put money in your pocket so that when you stop, 
the selling transactions, the money keeps coming in. And then last but not least, build wealth and give. Now, each week, we do some financial strategies webinars. It happens to be Thursday. So there'll be another one this evening at 8.30. Anybody interested in joining? Shoot me a text message. And let me know that these are things that you want to do. Also, I love sharing resources that have influenced me. Take a screenshot of these. I won't go into the book report on each of them and how they've influenced my strategy. But if you get to the place where you're interpreting and becoming the total money makeover for your clients, oh, that, let me leave that up for a while so that people know. If you want to get in touch with me, get more access to the information, the training, and the realtors, just text the keyword realtor along with your name to 404-594-4588 can find me on social media. I am richard-harden.com on my website. On Facebook, you'll get to see me working out, inspiring people, and talking about money. On Instagram, you'll see pictures of my kids, my dogs, and my dog singing. But here's what I understand. It's not just about information. It's about relationship. Let's connect. Let's win together, because that's the power of collaboration. Because I think about just this conversation. Natasha Johnson is a customer of mine. I'm a customer of hers. Not only have we helped create customers for her, it's the nature of cycles of business that keep supporting one another. And if we get really good at first having our money come back to us, at having our money cycle through us, that's how we build a dream team. Because together, everyone achieves more. With that, I'm done officially. I'm right. I'll see. I'm two minutes behind my 45. I, I apologize. But 645, leave room for questions and answers. Who has questions? Are there any questions? So if you have questions, woohoo, first of all, yay. That's awesome. Awesome information. Awesome, yeah, awesome information. Awesome. We had some comments in the chat. I know Patrice had commented about Financial Peace University. Mm -hmm. I have used that as well. I have the whole Dave Ramsey system and the Total Money Makeover, as well as the Financial Peace University. And I think someone else com commented about Robert Kiyosaki's. Listen, if you have not read most people have read probably Rich Dad, Poor Dad, but the second book in that cycle, Cash Flow Quadrant, is nope. an, an amazing book and it is a must read. You probably want to read it a couple of times because it really is helpful information to have to re uh, to build that foundation of mindset where finances is concerned. All right, so I'm going to open up the floor. You are, I think we've set it up where you can unmute your mic. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, by, by the way, one of the things that we're really good at assimilating is the concepts at work. Because one of the things I find about Dave Ramsey, I like him a lot for establishing your foothold. When it comes to the wealth portions, there are some places where we disagree on some things. But that's okay. What we find, here, here's my goal. When I provide books, I, I started out my process of financial education reading books. How many of you get education reading books? But the second thing, and it, here's the most important thing that we have to make sure to take away from all these conversations. You now have some knowledge that both you and your clients didn't know. Yeah. They used to say that knowledge is power, but I disagree. It's applied knowledge is power. So make sure that you make an action plan starting today based on what step you're at. You might already have your mini emergency fund or true emergency fund there, wherever you are, make action steps so that not only what you know, but what you do. That's a whole new, a whole different facilitation I do called do, doing, done. <laughs> we'll talk about that another day, but just being in the mindset of right now, what are you doing to make sure that as you're building, because here's the thing I, I love about realtors you have the opportunity to make an exceptional income. Yes? Yes. You also have the opportunity to make zero income. Yes? Yes. And so as income comes, converting some of it into something else that makes money while you're going out to make the next money. That's right. That's it. That's the key right there. All right. Other questions? We good? That is awesome. Listen, Richard, one of the things you mentioned, um, you know, taking action is so important and, I was, uh, just for my testimonial, I was poking around on the financial edge and I jumped into 
the legal piece of it and I started filling out the questionnaire to create a trust. I was like, oh, this is cool. It took me less than 20 minutes. Yep. So, and then I can consult with an attorney to get that all uh, finalized and save me some money overall. So that was a really cool and neat uh, feature for uh, the, the income shifting uh, portal. So if there are no more, if there are no questions, I don't see any questions in the chat. If you are on your phone and you need to unmute yourself, it is star six on your phone to unmute yourself. If you would like to place a question in the chat. So it's either, I think Richard, you were so exceptional today that everyone got the information they needed and we don't have any questions. Give it a five. So let me, let me do two things for you mm -hmm. as a bonus. Number one, anybody that wants to talk income shifting to get more details, shoot me, shoot me a text message. But also, as you're going through your days, make sure that you become what you want to see. And this is something I forgot to say on the front end, meaning how many of you would love to see clients coming to you with 780 to 850 credit scores? How many of you would love for those clients when they come to you to have more than five times their income versus debt ratio? Yep. And then how many of you would love for them to say, I have my down payment in hand in a cash equivalent right now today. Just show me what I need. Okay. Well, here's the secret that my mentor taught me. He said, we attract what we are, yep. not what we want. So make sure if any of those elements <clears throat> that are outside your profile that you need help on, get professional help. There is no shame in my game. I am so glad that I let professionals do things for me. They leave me room to work in my blessing. Give yourself the same favor. I know there are people that will tell you, I can fix my own credit. I can do my own debt snowball. I can do my own taxes. Of course you could. Just like I could show my own house, write my own lease, and get my own tenant in the house. Just Natasha did it better than me. Does that make sense? Right. Yes. So, right. Hey, be, be the change you want to see. So make sure. Get financially fit so that as you go through the process, you can literally point people to, I had to do it too. It's no shame. And that way, you make money on walk-ins and walk-aways, but you have more people walking towards you because you help them get it, buy it, and pay it off. <laughs> awesome. Woo right. That is awesome. 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 Be the change you want to see in your clients. I, I tell you what, that is a real challenge. I am well on my way. I am focused and my, I have been building the foundation on changing my mindset. And that's what these conversations are all about. We are having these sessions for realtors each and every month. And so uh, it is, it's in an effort to change our mindset so that we can grow our wealth and to grow. We've got to grow mentally before we can even grow financially or in any other area of our lives. So I want you guys, if you can come off mute, let's just give it up. For Mr. Richard Harden. Woo! Awesome. Woo! Woo! Awesome presentation. That was awesome. Okay. Yeah, Man, awesome. that was truly exceptional. I don't know about you. I took lots of notes right here in my handy dandy notebook. Listen, these last three days have been extraordinary. Between Teresa Harge, um, we we had um, oh my gosh, my mind just went blank. <laughs> Jaina, Jaina Wolf, Jimmy, of course. Uh, yeah, oh. I got it. Yeah, Jaina Wolf and Jimmy uh, Okanola. I tell you what, we had some great information here, and now today for uh, Mr. Richard Harden. So, with that said, we are. I'm going to turn it back over to none other than the the power couple. I'm just going to call them the power couple, the leaders mm -hmm. and the visionaries of the dream team mm -hmm. and the uh, founders of the OB team, <laughs> the OB team. other than Rod <laughs> and Lashery OB to close us out tonight. All right. All right. Wow. 
just a phenomenal job, Mr. Harden. Thank you so much for that information. I see all thank the you, comments and my phone is blowing up here about replays and everything. <laughs> so great job. And thank you so much for uh, spending your evening with us and just sharing this um, great information, valuable information um, to our realtor community out there. That, um, guys, this is this is what we need uh, to really get our finances in order. Right. You know, it starts at home. And like Mr. Harden said it, you want to be the type of person that type of client that you want to attract. So That's it right. first starts with you. So, uh, man, that's great information. Great info. Thank you so much. My guys, pleasure. Uh, we're going to be doing these every month. Um, look forward to uh, the in, in, uh, invite go, to going out um, about what maybe the third Tuesday of each month. Each month. And, um, and it'll be a different uh, financial empowerment, but a different topic, different perspective. So we talked about trust and wills. And, yeah. Um, setting up our um, companies, how to do that right. Um, and also the Natasha, men Natasha mentioned the uh, tax strategies. Uh, but so we'll have different topics, but we definitely want you to come on out. Um, this is all about giving back to the real estate community and uh, empowering us, right? Empowering us to be who we want to attract, just like, uh, like Richard mentioned. Awesome. Good, good. All right. Uh, just quick announcement coming up this Sunday for those of you who are not with EXP. We hold something. The Dream Team sponsors a um, Sunday Night Live where we come together and we talk about EXP Realty, this great phenomenal company um, called EXP Realty and how it's changed our lives, uh, luxury lives. Lives. We've been with the company now for um, going on it's soon to be eight years, and it's just been an amazing journey. Um, you heard our bio a little bit earlier. With you know among the top five percent. Um, an EXP Realty, you know, multiple year icon agents. And we just love to um, show you what's different about EXP. Why over a thousand agents are coming to EXP every single month. Hear our story, how it's changed our lives and, you know, both, um, you know, financially and all, you know, and we're, you it's know. A, it's, <laughs> so, a, it's a dynamic presentation, only yeah. 30 minutes, 30 minutes of your time, but we promise you it's going to be a very enlightening 30 minutes. And uh, Richard talked about increasing cash flow. He talked about business income, investment income. Those are some of the things that actually drew us to um, EXP Realty. Some yes. of the things that we're enjoying, um, you know, blessed to to have at this point. And so we definitely, if you are um, you know not currently an EXP agent or interested in knowing more, we'd love to talk with you more about that on Sunday Night Live. But we want to thank you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For being thank a part you. of the uh, event on this evening. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you, Richard. Great thank moderator. you, the Dream Team. Dream Team. Ooh, dream Team in the house. Wow. I know we got to start playing that song eventually. I'm, I'm going to bring it with me. <laughs> <laughs> we have some awesome, awesome uh, agents on the line that are part of the Dream Team. Awesome um, top producers in real estate. And yes. so this is just something that they have collaborated together with. We've collaborated with them to be able to, to provide this to you all. So good all right okay all right well thank you all so much guys um have a great evening and um again look out for the next event that's that's coming thank you so much and we'll just leave it open line open just a few minutes um we'll unmute everybody if you just want to chat and any remarks any comments but thank you all so much all right thank you that was awesome man this is great thank you so much yeah, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. awesome. Thank you, Jimmy. Right up your Thank you to all the guests that showed up as well. That's awesome. I hope everybody, you know, gained some great stuff. And we just can't wait to keep doing this and sharing. Yeah. It's awesome. Thank you, Rod. Thank you, Lashley. It's awesome.